Hi, it's Troy at the Full Setup here, back with another video for you today. And today I'm going to show you um, the BIOS of the MSI B350 Tomahawk Arctic, but this would also be the same for the Tomahawk. Um, we're going to have a little bit of look at some overclocking as well. I'm not going to give you a guaranteed overclock for your processor because we have quite a lot of Ryzen CPUs now. I'm just going to show you the general overclocking settings and where you can sort of start with that. Um, and yeah, just a general look at the BIOS. I'm sorry that this video is a bit late and it's a bit hard to see everything with the camera at the moment. It's a bit awkward getting here with the monitor. I'll just show you what the desk looks like when I'm not like making videos that you will get to, you know, you see me front on, it's a mess. And here is the PC and in the PC we have the MSI B350 Tomahawk or Arctic. Um, we've got a Ryzen 1700 CPU. I've got 16 gigabytes of uh, Cossier DDR4 Vengeance LED. This is with the white LED. I've actually got a 32 gigabyte kit of this in total, but we've got 16 gig in today. Um, we've got a Cossier H100i GTX. Um, with some Noctua fans on it, Noctua fans all around, and a GTX 1070, and it's all in a Cossier 600C case. And I promise I will do a build video of that one day, and I promise that every time we're in a video. So firstly, let's get the camera set up. So, what you wanna do is you wanna power on your computer and you wanna hold the delete key. Now, you're gonna be presented with two windows. Generally, the first one that you're gonna be presented with is this, which is just basically a quick overview of everything that's going on with your motherboard, so you can just see how your memory are, the fan info, for example, um, M flash as well for the BIOS updates. Now, I'm running the latest BIOS as of currently making this video, which was on May the 10th, um, and that is bought loads better memory support and we're going to talk about that in this video and just a few you know general you can see what's going on the options then we have axmp as well which is amd's version of xmp or msi's version of xmp so let's go back into the main settings now the first thing that i would probably do on this board is have a play around in hardware monitor now the reason i would have a play around in here which it doesn't appear to have saved my settings for my CPU, which will just change in a second, is basically MSI's command center is pretty crap. I don't like it compared to like Asus um, AI Suite. Now you can set fan profiles in command center, but the issue is it doesn't save them. They're not there when you boot it up. So you have to sort of get that all going again, which is a bit of a nightmare. So you just drag one of these and then you put them where you are. Now, because I've got all Noctua fans, I'm gonna, I normally keep it sort of quite quiet. I'm quite happy with it, but floating around quiet and idle temps to be a little bit higher. And then from say 60 degrees onwards, 65, I like it to ramp up the fans really. I know people always say my fan profiles look weird, but I just like it to ramp up because the thing is the only time I'm actually hitting those temperatures with this CPU is when I'm rendering um, or using applications like Handbrake and which is rendering again. And I'm not generally sat on my PC while it's doing that. I normally walk off, like I'll go make myself a sandwich or something, have a cup of tea. So yeah, the sound doesn't really bother me there. So you can see I have it quite quiet and then it just starts to ramp up, shift loads of air. You know, I've got three Noctua. These are 2000 RPM fans, so that should be fine. Does it save my pump settings? Yeah, and then the pump is where I sort of have like, you know, running at 70% and then ramps up. Okay, yeah, my fan profiles are weird, so we'll leave that for now. What else we've got here? So there's Board Explorer. See, so just shows you around the motherboard. So this is the board that we're using today. As you can see, we've got lots of fan headers on it as well. And we've only got a four plus two. So we've got six phase power, power with the VRM. And we'll talk about that in a bit for the overclocking. It's quite good, actually. I like this. Yeah, so Board Explorer. It's quite nice. Um, then again, you've got the M flash as well. So you just basically download the BIOS off the um, MSI website. You put it on a um, USB stick and you just flash that. Then there's basic motherboard settings so let's have a quick look in here so yeah you can just see the system status i'll just show you all of these as you can see just loads of advanced stuff not too many things you need to turn on in here and just some boot options it should be fine to leave everything in here just as it is and then you can set sort of passwords and things like that as well um so people can't get into your computer so let's go to overclock settings now Let's talk about memory. Now, as we know, Ryzen has been really bad with memory, hasn't it? But it's got loads better. Now, the Vengeance LED RAM was a known, not very good stick to work with Ryzen. Now, since I had the had this kit, I've only been able to run it at 2933, to, um, so 3000, run it at 2933. So that's still pretty good. But I'm now able to set it to 3200. So I think the first one sets it to, when you click AXMP, or you can do it in overclock settings, that sets it to 2933 and number two sets it to 3200 megahertz 
Now when you see the gaming footage that I'm doing, you'll generally see it with just yet yeah, a 16 gigabyte kit. But for general, because I use this as a workstation usage, I normally have all four sticks in. So 32 gigabytes of DDR4. Now, when Ryzen originally came out, you would be limited to 2133 megahertz. Now since the BIOS updates as well, when I've got all four sticks in, it runs at 2666 megahertz. And that's the same my Costia LPX RAM as well. So that's still good. We've got a 500 megahertz boost. And my fans just seem to be going ramping up and crazy. I've got to go back to do the fan profiles. I just had to reset the BIOS. Okay, let's have a little look at the overclocking settings. And now I've had to sort of bring you right in because it's quite hard with all this sort of white. My camera can't pick it up. It's definitely time that I got a new camera. So I'm apologies about the quality of certain parts of this video today, but we're going to show you this as best as I can. So the overclock explore mode, let's just change that to expert anyway, just to see as a memory retry count so it does that now the memory retry count is actually quite a useful thing what it will do is if you set the memory and it doesn't like it don't think you have to like clear your cmos it will basically just run see that like retry count five times so it will just retry that and then if not it will just boot back into bios so that's a useful thing to have going um we want the cpu frequency that's the most important thing now ryzen as we know like as i said earlier we've got lots of ryzen cpus now but you should be able to overclock every ryzen cpu if you've got an okay cooler um, and some stock coolers as well to 3.8 gigahertz writing in 3800 and that should be fine for most of you and that's why i think you should start um get that stable and then just start to up and tweak with your voltage from there now things you might see recently on my channel for any subscribers that i've been running this at three point i'll get that in there 3.950 just under four gigahertz for gaming videos now this works absolutely fine my Ryzen 1700 for gaming but when I put it under like some serious stress tests when I'm using handbrake, the VRM just can't handle it. I definitely think I've got a CPU that can do 4 gigs, it just needs to be on an X370 motherboard. I'm not saying that you're not going to be able to hit 4 gigahertz maybe on like some Ryzen 5 CPUs, maybe like a 1600 or a 1500X, but I just think that the 8 cores are a little bit too much for this motherboard for the VRM. So my daily overclock is, let me put it in is 3.8 gigahertz core performance boost so that would be set to auto normally but we want to do disabled now down core control as you can see here it gives you options for setting different cores um, how many you want lot of this simulated ryzen videos that you've been seeing on youtube that's how we've been doing it um, then we've got the xmp profile as you can see we've already set it up for 3.2 profile 1 2933 don't want that so there we go then there's also the RAM frequencies as well you can set your own and um, there's also a memory trier option as well so you can test different versions I did have a little play around with this when I first got the motherboard and found that some of them I can't remember which ones work quite well but since the new BIOS update so I haven't needed it that memory retry count that I mentioned earlier um, it's just quite nice then because the, um, the CMOS battery will generally be in the hidden by your graphics card and quite awkward to get out um, and then we have advanced DRAM configuration as well for anyone that wants to set their own timings digital all power now this is where we have the load line calibration now you can leave this exactly how it is now as much as i don't think the vrms are too good on this motherboard the load line calibration the voltage regulation is really nice you can see an occt here that we've literally got no voltage drop whatsoever if you were going to change that like literally mode one or mode two i just literally you can leave it as is to be fair but you know tweaking those last few megahertz you might need it now for my cpu this would normally be set to auto the voltage i'm um, at 1.2 um but the voltage that i found works best for me with the ryzen 1700 is 1.35 now you will hear very mixed things about voltage online you'll see a lot of people say that they're running at 1.3 absolutely fine and a lot of these people i've spoke to are actually on x370 motherboards not b350 and there seems to be a very very voltage sort of silicon lottery on this you just get some chips that can handle much lower voltage but as a general rule of thumb for most people when you're starting to overclock you want to be between 1.4 and 1.3 or 1.3 and 1.4 so i'd probably start at 1.35 volts volts that's the voltage that i use um boot up into windows run some stress tests now if it crashes you up the voltage so you could go to 1.375 and if it runs really well and you feel like you can drop that voltage and get some better temps and you go 1.325 and 
in little increments like that and just tweak it to exactly how you want it now for that 3.95 i was running at 1.3 eight i think so yeah 1.375 um and that was fine but it's definitely getting a little tasty now i tried going up to you know the 1.42 sort of areas which is where you're gonna need for your four gigahertz and it does not like it for me personally it's not the actual processor itself it doesn't like it is just the v the, just the you know the vrms that just get so hot all the mosfets are just kicking out like i touched it you could you could barely touch it it was that hot so I backed it down from there. I'm not saying you probably can't push the 1.4 volts, just probably not with an eight core CPU, maybe a Ryzen 1500X, you will be absolutely perfect running that sort of voltage. So just set that back to 1.35. CPU Northbridge voltage, haven't really played with it, left it at auto. DRAM voltage 1.35, I've just left it at auto. I might lower it, but hey ho, my RAM's got a lifetime guarantee and I've got the receipt, so not really that fussed. Um, CPU memory change detect. So that's good. That's just when you uh, reboot and stuff if the settings have changed. So it'll give you an option. So you just press F1 to go into BIOS. Do you want to keep it? Do you want to not? CPU specifications. Here you can see, here's my Ryzen 1700. Probably I would have said the 1700 was the best one to buy, but right now the 1700X is probably the best value, I'd say. Let me just lower this down a little bit. What else have we got? And there is memory Z as well, so it's just going to tell you. Oh, we've got to go back up. It's about your memory. And the last one in the list is CPU features. So you can turn off SMT because some games don't really work with it that well. That has been getting better, especially with like AMD's power profiles now. And AMD and Cool and Quiet automatically disables itself when you do the overclocking and you want that disabled. Anyway, so now you're done with all of that. And then you can save it to a profile. See, I've got some profiles here. So you just go in, set overclocking profile free, do that, exit. We're going to get out of here. I've not done any changes anyway. And we're going to try and boot, see what we can get. One thing I found about MSI motherboards is they just take freaking forever to post. I've had quite a few different ones and they take ages to post. Um, also, anyone in the UK, I just got this, the Ryzen, Ryzen, the Razer Kraken um, V1, not the V2 version, but this is the 7.1 synthesized with the, I love that the mic pulls out there, so you haven't got a mic in your way. Now, because of the V2s come out, you can pick these up off eBay from Argos's eBay outlet for 55 pounds, so I recommend you get those. And here you go, we are in Windows almost there and as you can see here on screen i'm running at 3.8 gigahertz so with ryzen 1700 cpu 1.35 volts and also in hardware info here you can see my ram is set at 1600 megahertz but because it's double data rate that means 3200 megahertz so there we go i'm sorry about the quality of some of this video today hopefully not the quality for me just the overall picture quality but i hope there was enough in there for you to just sort of see around the bios i know i was supposed to be showing this ages ago and i did promise it to a lot of my subscribers but i hope it's helped you out if you're thinking of buying one would i buy this motherboard um if i had a chance to again yes definitely for 100 pounds i think it's probably one of the best um the msi ones are the best ones going especially the amount of fan headers that they've got um, just the built-in software isn't very good at all. But anyway, I hope you like that video. Um, I'll be back with another hopefully overclocking video very soon. Um, and if you like it, tell me why. If you don't like it, tell me why. And don't forget to subscribe.